let's say that when she's laughing, she's like, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. I would be like, damn, when you laugh, it sounds almost like you're orgasming. And they would typically laugh too. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. In today's video, I'm gonna talk about how to sexualize your date with confidence. Okay, if you don't sexualize, the girl will see you platonically. And when guys hear things like after a date where the girl's like, oh, I just didn't really feel much chemistry. I didn't really see this going anywhere. It's better if we just stay friends. That's all because the guy forgot to sexualize in most cases. But guys always ask me, they're like, well, how do I sexualize? Okay, they think that they need to come on the date and have like some pre-rehearsed lines that are sexual or ask some pre-rehearsed questions that are sexual and that will sexualize. Okay, that's not correct. That's the wrong way to do it. I've had guys go on dates and they're like, hey, tell me your deepest, darkest sexual fantasies. And the girl's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Or they're like, no, tell me the, the craziest things that you like in bed. That's like too hardcore and it's like over the top and you're just getting to know the person right on the date. So instead, when you sexualize, you usually wanna do it in the form of a joke. You can say, a go-to one that I always use is you can say that's what she said, okay? So if they say some kind of sexual reference that can be twisted, then you would say, oh, that's what she said. So if she's like, yeah, I like it, like from the top or something like that, she's talking about whatever, you can say, oh, that's what she said, right? And then I would smile and laugh. And I oftentimes like tap the girl too and implement physicality at that time as well. The frame of mind needs to be that almost as if you've already banged the girl and you've been banging her for months. You need to act comfortable. A lot of guys are afraid to make a sexual joke or sexual innuendo because they think it will put the girl off. They think it will offend her. They think she won't like it. So they try to play it safe and not take that little leap and sexualize. And the problem is if all of a sudden out of nowhere, you start trying to sexualize like way later in the date, it's gonna seem incongruent with the frame you already set. If it's like platonic, 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 fact exchange, trading information about each other, answering questions about each other. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I'm gonna sexualize. It's gonna be like not congruent with the frame that you set. And she's gonna be like, oh, what the fuck is this? Even worse, if you don't sexualize at all, lots of times she won't wanna go back with you or she's just not gonna to wanna to see you again. She's gonna say, I didn't feel chemistry, I don't see this going anywhere, et cetera, et cetera. You need to make these comments. Now, instead of coming with a pre-rehearsed set of lines or go-to things, I'm gonna show you how you can spontaneously make remarks like that and what framework to use. But before we get into that, if you want my full dates blueprint on how to move the conversation forward, how to never run out of things to say, which venues to choose, how long you should be going on your date for, what activities should you be doing, how to frame it for her to come home with you, how to answer objections when you ask her to come home with you, et cetera, et cetera. I will teach you all that and more. I will also help you max out your online game profile and give you the exact messages to send on Tinder and over text message, as well as teaching you my full cold approach strategy at bars and clubs during the daytime and how to run dates, close dates, and retain the girls that you want. Okay, get on a free 30 minute call let my team diagnose your current situation, your goals, and your problems in the game. And we will give you a customized solution about how we can fix all that stuff, usually within a month's time. Okay, but the program is two months in case there's any lingering issues to work through. What you want to do is spontaneously make references to sexual things. Let's say that when she's laughing, she's like, ha ha ha, ha ha ha. I would be like, damn, when you laugh, it sounds almost like you're orgasming. Ha, ha, ha. And they would typically laugh too. Like, oh my God, right? And they're gonna feel like a little embarrassed. Very common ones, if you're on a drink date, if the girl has a bottle of beer, for instance, and she's drinking out of it, lots of times they have their tongue out and they put their tongue in first before they bring the bottle up to their mouth. So it looks like kind of sexual, right? Or if they have the, the wine glass, lots of times they're like kind of stroking or massaging the wine stem. I will comment on those things. I will be like, oh, when you when you drink out of the bottle, it looks like this. Or at a coffee shop, when she's like doing this with like the straw to get the paper off, I'll be like, damn, you seem pretty good at that, right? Any kind of action she does, you can make a sexual remark about it. Now it's not done in a serious way, right? Like if she's like getting the straw paper off and she's like going like this, or sometimes when they're telling stories, you know, they're, they're going like this or whatever with, with motions. It's not like, did you know that looks like you're jerking off a penis? Right? It's not all serious and it can't be like timid either. Like, oh, uh, the, the, that actually looked kind of funny. It looked, you know, you have to be confident and it's like just joking around with a girl you've been seeing for a while. Even if it's the first date, that's the frame of mind you need to come from. So that way you're not like, you know, hesitant or asking permission in a way. 
conveying that you're uncomfortable with making a joke like that. I typically will laugh, right? So if I was like, oh my God, it looks like you're fucking really good at that. And if they don't get it, if they're like, what do you mean? I'd be like, oh, you're going like this, right? I make sure like to add on so that they understand the joke I'm trying to make. And then we both typically laugh and then I poked them on the side. In an infield that I broke down on our challenge this past weekend, I was even doing it during day game, right? I was just talking in the conversation. The girl's like, hey, I'm, I'm a little bit sick right now, blah, blah, blah. Like I have a little bit of a cough. And I was like, oh, so we can't make out then in the store. And then we're both laughing. A lot of guys would be like, well, I don't even know this girl. How can I talk like that? You can, and they expect you to. Okay, so know that. Know that you have to make these remarks, and you should do so in a spontaneous, authentic way just as you can twist any part of the conversation. Today was long outside. Today was hard. It was really wet out, right? Oh, do you like it when it's really wet? Do you like it when it's long and hard, right? And the girls are always like, oh my God, right? But they usually find it really funny. And you have to make jokes like that because it's going to bring you out of the friend zone and make her see you more than platonically, okay? And that's also why I implement the physicality as I was saying. So I'll make the joke like, oh, it looks like you have a lot of practice there. They're like, oh my God, ah. and I like tap them on the side, tap them on the leg. If you're across the table, kick their leg under the table. If their hand is on the table, you can hold their hand and release and let go. It's really important to make these jokes. You can just use, that's what she said, as a fallback. It applies to almost anything, even if there's like no sexual reference. If she says something that couldn't even ever be twisted sexual, you could be like, that's what she said. And it makes it sexual like that. Okay, so keep in mind, any sound she makes, any part of the story that you can twist, anything she's doing with objects, okay, in, in your field of vision. And like when you're telling stories or, or you, like let's say you're like, yeah, and that, and that was like a really hard experience. That's what she said, right? So as you make comments like that in your natural conversation when you're telling stories, boom, you can sexualize on that as well. I would say this is the top two problems that I see guys make on dates is not sexualizing enough or not sexualizing at all. Okay, I think it's better to do it too much than not enough because some guys will just like take their like one shot and it like doesn't go over, even if it does, it's still like only one time. It's not that you need to be sexualizing like every sentence, but whenever I have a window to do it, I do it. And then if at some point, every once in a while, a girl will be like, oh, is that the only kind of joke you think about? Or is that all you think about? And I'm like, haha, I just think stuff like that is funny. Change topic. And most of those girls will still sleep with you, but now you know you've reached like a, you know, kind of a, it's coming up on like a, a maximum point or it's like fatiguing, right? It's saturating. The other thing too, is if the girl is like offended, right? So let's say you make a sexual joke. I had this happen. I'm, the first thing that came to mind is I was out with like a school teacher who taught like little kids. And so there's like a no swearing rule out in class and like obviously no inappropriate topics allowed. So I immediately start cracking like really inappropriate jokes, swearing a bunch. And she's like, oh my God. And then it was just shocking to her because she's not used to hearing jokes like that. And she's not used to people swearing a bunch of all that stuff. So I just like toned it back, right? So you can still calibrate. You go forth, make those kinds of jokes. If the girl reacts negatively or she doesn't like it, you can calibrate, say, sorry, I was just joking. I think something that's funny, haha, and move on from there. And then maybe you back off those kind of jokes for a little bit. And if you do make them again, make them more tame, make them more PG, right? So it's not as hardcore. So you can adapt on a per girl basis that way. But most girls, are going to be receptive. Most girls are going to laugh when you make jokes like that. And you really need to be doing that. The other biggest mistake guys make on dates, which is not the topic of this video, but the other big mistake is that they don't frame it for her to come back home properly. So at the end of the day, okay, see you later. She goes to her place, you go to your place, or she calls, you know, she calls a cab, she goes to her car, whatever, you part ways. You need to be set in the frame that she's going to come back with you. And then oftentimes she will give you objections. She'll be like, oh, I don't go home with guys on the first date. I'm not that kind of girl. I know that if I come back, like, you're just going to be wanting one thing, right? That's all like forms of the hookup objection. Or the very other common one is a safety objection. How do I know you're not a serial killer? I don't go home with strangers, right? Like, I, I don't know if I can trust you yet. How do I know that you're not going to murder me? Blah, blah, blah. And you'll hear those because the girl wants to make sure she feels safe. Like you just have interacted for a short period and she doesn't want to feel slutty. She doesn't want to look slutty to you, to herself to her friends, or even to God. Okay, I've heard that as well. They don't want to be judged because okay, society tells them if they go home with a guy that they just met, then maybe they're slutty. I can teach you in my full course in the eight-week program exactly how to overcome those objections and many more, exactly how to set the frame for the girl to come back home with you. I have a whole bunch of infield dates from start to finish, hidden camera interactions, 
where you can see and hear everything that I'm doing and saying. So you can literally just copy it. What kinds of stuff am I talking about? How do I move it forward? Okay, how do I sexualize things properly and spontaneously? How do I set it up for her to come home with me? How do I answer objections for her to come home with me? How am I stacking my conversational topics? How am I being physical? How do I react to things she does? And so on and so forth. And that's just one part of the training. I'll also give you all my tech scripts that I use, all my online game messages on Tinder that I use. I'll get your Tinder really getting you a lot higher quantity and quality of matches and everything else in between. Okay, how to get the hookup once you do bring her back home, how to keep the ones you want, how to pick up strippers and hired guns, waitresses, bartenders, etc. Okay, so get on one of those free 30-minute calls if you want to learn the entire solution. And I hope this sheds some light now. If you're not sexualizing or not sexualizing very much, now you know that you need an immediate adjustment. Okay, rewatch this video if you need to for the concepts included in order to know exactly how you're going to be sexualizing on your next dates. Okay, but the full training is much more comprehensive. And especially with the hidden camera infields, it really makes it click because you can see what's happening. So get on one of those calls. Check out my video in the end screen for more details about sexualizing. And thank you guys so much. Let me know what you think in the comments. Like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys on a video soon. Take care. And Jay don't stand in line. I ain't never had to wait. I'm the realest in this game. I ain't never had to fake. Just take a look at the scores. I put numbers up on the boards. I'm in a section with models, and you're at the bar trying to get out of cluster of fours. Fixed drama factor, I'm a boss tycoon. My dick smell like two chicks before noon.